All right, everybody, good late afternoon or early evening, and we got another hire earlier today. I wasn't able to make an immediate video after this was announced early this morning. Had some things I had to do today, but I do want to talk about this now because this is actually a pretty high-profile one as far as the position goes. Um, this is a running backs coach, and the guy that we have picked up is Kenny... Palomalu, and this guy has been around for a long time, usually in running back coach roles. He's had a couple of stints where he was an offensive coordinator, but Kennedy Palomalu is considered to be one of the best running backs coaches out there. So this is a relatively high profile hire for the position, and it's great news for Ken Walker and Zach Charbonnet, and maybe Kenny McIntosh as well. So... This is a uh, this is pretty good. This is pretty sweet, and it kind of speaks to the philosophy that I've talked about in recent days. Where because we have so much inexperience on this coaching staff with McDonald, with Grub, with Dirt, I wanted some people in the room in the house who were experienced. So this is definitely an experienced guy. This is one of the more experienced running backs coaches you're going to find. Most guys who have been running backs coaches for this long, especially the ones who have done well, like this guy mostly has, would probably move up the ranks at some point. But this guy, he just seems pretty content sitting there as a running back coach. He's been occupying those roles for a long time. And again, he's by and large done pretty well. So I did throw together the resume on Kenny Palomalu. Um, it goes back very far. It goes back to the 90s. He was actually a guy who was coaching under Pete Carroll at USC before USC went on their uh, championship runs. So um, that, that's how long the resume goes back. It goes back even further than that. But um, I, I did want to kind of focus on the last 20 years in particular. That's where a lot of the best stuff is anyway, and it's also the stuff that we as Seahawks fans care about. A uh, guy just turned 60 a few months ago, so... He's up there, but that's what happens when you're experienced. When you have a lot of experience, you also have a lot of year, years on you. So uh, looking at the recent results, the most recent year was not so good with the Las Vegas Raiders. He was the uh, running back coach, which is where he's been most places. Uh, he was there for two years. So 2023, not good. Josh Jacobs did not have a good year. 800 yards, three and a half yards a carry. Zamir White filled in for Josh Jacobs when he missed time, which he did miss a good amount. Zamir played all right, 4.3 yards of carry, 400 yards, 500 yards from scrimmage. However, 2022, here we go. Josh Jacobs has a career year, the best year of his career by far so far. He makes the all-pro team, over 1,600 rushing yards, 5 yards of carry, 12 touchdowns, 400 receiving yards, 2,000 yards from scrimmage. <coughs> one of the better running back seasons we've seen in a while. And the only other running back of any notoriety on that roster was Brandon Bolden. He had all of 120 yards from scrimmage. Very, very little going on there. So it was the Josh Jacobs show. And Josh Jacobs was about as good as any running back in the NFL in 2022. And while Josh Jacobs was a good player before Kenny Kapalamalu got there, Josh Jacobs definitely had his best year in 2022. So pretty good. But it gets even better if you go back a little bit further to the Minnesota Vikings, where he was the running back coach for five seasons. And these five seasons were summed up best by Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook was the primary running back for most of these seasons. He was a, a rookie in 2017, and Dalvin Cook would be a three-time Pro Bowler under Kenny Palomalu's coaching. Now, Obviously, Dalvin Cook is a supreme talent, and Dalvin Cook was a uh, productive player after Kenny Palomalu left, but given the fact that Kenny Palomalu was there basically the whole time that Dalvin Cook was there in Minnesota, a lot of his uh, production and a lot of his effectiveness does trail back to him. And really, the Vikings during this period of time, especially his last three years there, were in part defined by the one-two punch they had of Dalvin Cook who made the Pro Bowl, I think, all three years, averaged over five, four and a half, so anywhere from four and a half to five yards of carry, had um, over 30 touchdowns on the ground, and was also a prolific receiver. He caught well over 120 passes across these three seasons. 
had over a thousand receiving yards. And then the other part of that punch, the two punch, Alexander Madison, uh, who would give you a good 400 yards a season on reasonable efficiency. And also some work as a receiver had over 60 catches, I think, uh, over 50 catches, excuse me, over this three year period. So that one, two punch was one of the better running back combos in the league. And that all came under Kenny Palomalu as the coach. Now, before then, Dalvin Cook battled injuries. He barely played in 2017, played a little bit more, but still not a full season in 2018. So you had Latavius Murray, who was okay. You know, he gives you about four yards a carry, little less than 1,000 yards in 2017. You also had one year of Jarek McKinnon. He had a pretty good year as a backup in 2017, pretty decent. But uh, really, this Vikings tenure is defined by the dominance of Dalvin Cook and the effectiveness of Alexander Madison. So really good stuff from Kenny Palomalu when he was in Minnesota. Now, he did spend one year as the offensive coordinator at UCLA after spending a couple years there as the running back coach. Didn't go very well. UCLA was bad in 2016 and their offense was not good. 24.9 points a game. 96th, there wasn't a lot going on on that offense in terms of like big time players. They actually had Josh Rosen the year before he broke out and became an eventual top 10 pick, but not a lot going on on that offense. I think that was Jim Mora's, uh, Jim Mora Jr.'s last year. Uh, the two previous years are more interesting where um, he's the running back coach here, Palomalu, for 2014 uh, 2015. Those were two uh, Paul Perkins years. Paul Perkins was big time for them. Averaged about six yards a carry and had 23 touchdowns um, over that two-year period. Also caught over 50 passes for about 450 yards. So Paul Perkins was their guy there, and he was very effective. Obviously, he did not go on to become a big-time NFL player, but he was in the NFL. Um, Went through a couple different backups during this period. Uh, Soso Jamabo, which is a very fun name, and Jordan James were both the uh, reasonably effective backups. Not much to say there, but... That was a pretty good couple of years for him. And before then, he found himself as the offensive coordinator and running back coach at USC for three years. I believe this was uh, Lane Kiffin. This was right after Pete Carroll left. And there was a little bit of overlap. Well, no, excuse me. There, uh, This is not where the overlap happens with Carroll. The overlap happens well before then. He was at USC in the early 00s. Uh, but uh, this was right after Carroll left. And you can see the offense across these three years was good. 40th, 37th out of about 120 teams. They had one year where they were great, 16th best offense in the league. The running backs he coached were not exactly big names. You had uh, Allen Bradford, did average 7.2 yards a carry, almost 800 yards, that's good. Uh, Mark Tyler was a pretty solid running back one. Curtis McNeil had 1,000 yards in 2011. Uh, Mark Tyler was the backup that year. Silas Red became the starter in 2012. Curtis McNeil got bumped to the backup role. They were all efficient and effective, but nobody who really stands out here. There's no Reggie Bush here. There's no Lendell White here. It's just, you know, a collection of guys who were pretty decent. And um, part of the problem, of course, is the fact that USC was no longer a complete powerhouse because powerhouse USC would have been able to run the ball all game long because they have such a big lead. This was not that USC team. But uh, regardless, pretty decent work here. But I really want to get back to this Jacksonville Jaguars run that he had. He was the running back coach there for five years, and it was a great run characterized by the uh, meat of Fred Taylor's career and the start of Maurice Jones-Drew's career, one of the best one-two punches in all of football. Like early on, you've got Fred Taylor uh, just uh, chugging along here in 2005 with Greg Jones. Not a great start, just uh, two pretty decent running backs getting it done. And then in 2006, Fred Taylor rejuvenated by the introduction of Maurice Jones-Drew. Both guys almost have 1,000 yards. Uh, Maurice Jones-Drew, one of the best receiving backs of his era, catches 40 to 50 passes a year as a backup. And then once he gets uh, the starting role, he's out there catching 50 to 60 passes. So one of the best um run um receiving backs out there pretty much immediately when he entered the league fred taylor became an ultra effective running back across this period of time averaging over five yards a carry uh 1100 1200 yards decent enough receiver kind of gets to slowly ease his way into retirement by 2008 
So that was a really good run by uh, Palomalu here. And this stuff like this is why he has such a positive reputation. The Mojo, Fred Taylor backfield, and the Dalvin Cook, Alexander Madison backfield, plus the Josh Jacobs All-Pro year, that adds up to a really good, really strong resume for Palomalu. And this is why this is a good hire. This is why I am excited to have him on board and why I imagine that this is a sign that there's a lot of excitement around this coaching staff headed by Mike McDonald. So, great hire, um, loving it. There was a one year where he was the running back coach with Cleveland in 04, but there wasn't much here. Uh, Lee Suggs, who I actually remember, but a lot of people probably don't, uh, he was not very good. And then William Green, I remember him as well. He was also not very good, but um, it, it, it's the Browns. What do you expect? So, great stuff in this resume here. It seems like a pretty great hire to me. I'm excited. I'm pumped to see what he can do. He's working with a lot of talent here with uh, – uh, Ken Walker and Charbonnet and uh, McIntosh, and I imagine we're going to add some young guy. So he's got a lot of cards to uh, he's got a lot of cards to play, and I'm excited to see what comes next. I think you guys should be excited too. I know it's a running back coach, but they matter. Running back coaches do matter, and they may matter in ways that we as fans don't ever really get to see, but they do matter. Nice hire, nice pickup. And I'm excited to see what comes next. All right. See you guys later. Go Hawks. Uh, should be streaming later today on Twitch. If not, um, um, I'll probably be streaming right now. One of the two. I'll, I'm either streaming right now or I'm going to be streaming a little after dinner time. Either way, see you guys later. Go Hawks.